and I was there. And 40 years later, every moment of May 30th, 1981 remains etched in Michael Fair's mind. He was watching TV at the Pisces Spa. When all of a sudden there was this rush, at lights went on, the rush of people running down the hallway. Police had stormed the downtown bathhouse. One of them came into that TV room where there were at three or four of us watching TV um, and, and yelled, uh, don't move, this is a raid, stay right where you are. Both scary and crazy and frightening. Fair was one of 56 gay men rounded up by about 50 officers. Each had his picture taken at Pisces and was accused of being found in a common body house. Fair fought back. The moment galvanized him. He became active in the LGBTQ community and later served 15 years on city council. But others at Pisces struggled. In this building right behind us, 60 gay men were arrested and they weren't breaking the law. Writer Darren Hagen is researching the raid and preparing to write a book and a play. The more he uncovers, the more infuriated he becomes. I'm in mourning right now for the lives that they could have led, the, the contributions they could have made to Edmonton's society that they never got to make because their dignity was assaulted in such a demeaning and pointless way. Many of the headlines that followed demonized the men. Some of their names were publicized, others forced to choose between pleading guilty or facing public trial for being in a bathhouse. Lives were ruined, reputations were shattered, jobs were lost, families were broken up. Um, Edmonton needs to be able to sort of reconcile its past. In 2019, Edmonton police apologized for the raid, and now, 40 years later, both Hagen and Fair say it's important not to simply move on. The painful memories are often the most important ones. We do have to go back and sort of address the things that have happened. I mean, a history that's unexplored is a history that we don't learn from. I think that it's significant to uh, understand what um, oppression of a particular group can lead to. Fletcher Kent, Global News. It was back on May 30th, 1981. Police raided a city bathhouse and arrested dozens of gay men. The day remains etched in Michael Fair's mind. He was watching TV at Pisces Spa when police stormed in. He was one of 56 people rounded up. Each had his picture taken and was accused of being found in a common body house. Many of the headlines that followed demonized the men. Their names were publicized and they were forced to choose between pleading guilty or facing public trial for being in a bathhouse. I think that, that it, it's significant um, to, to uh, understand um, uh, what, what um, oppression of a particular group can lead to. A judge convicted Fair of being found in a common body house. He appealed his conviction and won. Fair became active in the LGBTQ community and served 15 years as a city councillor. Now, Darren Hagen is researching the raid and is getting ready, set rather, to write a book and a play. He joins us now live. And Darren, thanks for making time to chat today. So you said to us in an earlier interview that lives were ruined by this raid. Can you take us through some of those consequences and effects for those who were arrested? Well, absolutely. Even if you uh, just look at the media that was happening at the time, the fact that all of the names of the foundings were actually broadcast on Supper Time News, that... Uh, took away the, uh, the, um, the veil of being able to keep your life a secret for a lot of those men, if, if they were seen. There was people that lived in small towns that came to Edmonton and used the Pisces bathhouse as a way of connecting with the gay community that they didn't have access to in their small town. Once those names were broadcast, there were reports that some of those people had to leave those small towns. There was people that were worried about sensitive jobs with the government or, with, uh, or as teachers where they could lose their jobs for being gay, that kind of thing. And there's actually a really, I interviewed uh, one of the um, Edmonton Police Service constables that actually was a young constable, 23 years old at the time of the raid, and he was involved in going in and arresting two people. Um, and, you know, at the end of that night, he got a paycheck and he went back to work and continued his life as if nothing had happened. Also in the bathhouse that night was one of the staff members who was also 23 years old. The next day he woke up, he had no job, his place of business was closed, and his name was published in the paper as being a keeper of a common body house. That's not equity and that's not justice. Mm -hmm. You know, Darren, local historians have done extensive work to gather the details on the raid and the legal proceedings that followed, but it's been hard to find that information. Can you take us through that? 
Well, um, the information has been slow in coming, but it actually is coming. Uh, the Edmonton Police have uh, released uh, files over the years. Um, more have come out this year. That's been kind of interesting to learn some of the details of the case. But part of the <clears throat> part of the reason that it's been hard to sort of track down the human stories, which are the stories that I'm interested in. What did people actually go through in their lives when this happened? Um, you know, the, I, we don't have access to their names. There's uh, uh, 60 people were arrested and charged. Some of them were known to the community, so I found out some of those names. Um, the people that are alive that lived through the AIDS crisis of the 80s, most of them don't want to talk about it even 40 years later. This is why Michael Fair is so exceptional in this story is because not only did he fight it to the end and get an unconditional discharge at the end um, and, and went on to become such a major con contribution to Edmonton's sort of life, quality of life, uh, but uh, he was one of the only ones that's actually ever spoken publicly about the events of that night on the record. Now, you mentioned Edmonton police there. Two years ago, the police chief, Dale McPhee, issued an apology to the LGBTQ community for actions that included that spa raid. And that apology was to be the beginning of a process. What are your hopes for the future when it comes to relationships between law enforcement and the community and, and the wider city of Edmonton? Well, history, morality, and understanding of each other is a is a moving target. It's something that we never can say, there, we're done. We all understand each other now. Life changes. Uh, our view of things changes as, as decades move on. So I think it's a constant, uh, it's a constant job for all of us to, you know, remain vigilant about the rights of people and how people are treated by the society's structures and systems. So um, I would just hope that we can all keep open minds and open ears and keep that communication going so that we can uh, prevent something like this from happening in the future and the best way of doing that as far as I'm concerned is to uncover some of those stories and to tell about the real life implications you know I mean when I was first started re researching this story I found the same 2,000 words everywhere and the narrative was always controlled by what the police said and what the media said so for me it's really important to find out what happened to the people that were there that night and what did they feel going through it and how did their families react and how did their employers react so Darren, let's expand upon that. You're working on a play and a book. Uh, what do you hope people will take away from those works and when can we see those works come to fruition? Well, Theatre Network is uh, committed to producing the, the play version, the book. Um, well, books take a long time, we'll see. And but plus new stuff keeps coming out. So that's kind of interesting. I'm still, you know, it's the anniversary today, but I'm still learning new things, you know, day by day about uh, sort of the details. For me, it's all about not everyone has the uh, patience to go through original source documents of which there are you know now uh, thousands of pages of stuff and some of it's kind of traumatic to read so my job as a historian and as a dramatist uh, and a writer is to sort of condense those stories and present them in a package that's easier for you know uh, the general public to be able to absorb and to, to learn from wow looking forward to seeing those works when they when they come out you'll let us know when we can attend the play and read the book Oh, you just try shutting me up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deal. I mean, we won't try, but please keep us posted. Darren, thanks so much. <laughs> Darren, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.